good? Yep, we're good. Okay, so now I want to tell you about Finnegan's Wake by James Joyce. And before I even get into it... It's a good thing you took the silverware away from me so I don't have anything to stab my eyeballs with. I have to start by saying I did not finish the book. So that's kind of important. Um, I don't think anybody's actually ever finished that book. I, it's, I it's, do. I really do think that's true. It's unreadable. I'm not actually sure James Joyce finished that book. It's unreadable. Um, I, I just feel like James Joyce is like the elder Irish brother of Faulkner. There's a lot of similarities. Um, yeah. He went overboard, I, in, in my opinion. Like, um, I read, I don't know, maybe 100 pages. Oh, um, you really didn't finish it. Not to, oh, like, put oh, you on the spot there. Like, you you can't read a page. You, you cannot read it. Can I just see it? Open. Read. Try to read the first paragraph. Okay. Or the first sentence. I'm going to keep talking while you do that. You, go ahead. So, like... Oh, it doesn't even pa start with, like, a capital letter. It starts at the end of the book. The last sentence of the last page runs into the first one. So the whole thing's a giant circle. For one. Uh, okay. Just start reading it. Well, I, I'm just going to start. Yeah, start at the front. Okay. River Run makes me think of Game of Thrones. Past Adam and Eve's from Swerve of Shore to Bend of Bay brings us by a commodious vicus of recirculation back to Howth Castle and environs. Sir Tristram, I'll read the second paragraph and I'll stop. Vi Violar de Moors for over the short sea had passing corps re arrived from North uh, Arm. Oh, god, Armic. Yeah, to this side, the scraggy isthmus of Europe Minor to wielder fight his. Okay, yep, yeah, I'm done. I'm not even gonna make it through that. Yep, oh wow, okay. Like when, when you when I'm saying, like, you can't read it, like. <clears throat> You can't even sound out the words. It's incomprehensible. It is incomprehensible, yeah. So, one of the reasons that I stopped is that the book has no handholds. As you're going along... That's a really great way to describe it. There's there's n nothing... That, like, kind of tethers you to the rock of like, literacy. I don't know what the story is. I don't know... That's a great description. I don't know... I don't even know if there are characters... Uh, I don't know the setting. I don't know the location. Well, it's River Run. He tells you that. It's the first one. River, yeah. Like, <laughs> so, a couple things that, like, I thought... You made it 100 pages, though, man. I mean, that is... I, I give you credit for that. Because I, I didn't make it past the it, it would be, it would first more, two sentences. It would be more accurate to say that, like, my eyes passed over 100... <laughs> like, pages of gobbledygook? Yeah, like, at the end of it... Which may be... Actually, a James Joyce creation, that word, now that I've read that. Like, me reading... If I read the whole entire thing, and you haven't read any of it, we would both still be on equal footing. <laughs> uh, and, like, one of the... Like, the experience that I had... Like, it, it, it's not like picking up a, a book in Russian, and you just glaze over. There's these little things that pop out, and... Like you, I might see like three words in a row and get a little excited and go, that are okay, coherent here, here okay here we go here's gonna be and then it just blows out again and you go a little bit more and go like that's a word I know <laughs> I know the definition of that one yeah and then you go off and like nothing well I noticed like even in that second paragraph like there's just like some random 47 letters yeah yeah so there's a lot of stuff that's involved. There's a book called, like, The Skeleton Key of Finnegan's Wake. Um, that's, um, what do you call it? Like, um... Like, the liner notes to help you get through it? Yeah. Kind of like, yeah. Right. The, For one, it's longer. The thing that helps you understand the wormhole that you've just gone down? It's longer than the book. The explanation of the book is longer than the book. That word that had yeah. all those characters. So, there's nine of those type of words. They have a hundred letters per word. There's another one that has a hundred and one letters. So throughout peppered throughout the book. It's like a scavenger hunt. And if you're smart enough, I guess that's not the right word. I'm not. If you pick up 
you'll go, oh, that's an allusion to a, a, a thousand and one Arabian Nights. Because there's a thousand and one letters combined in these hundred words. Ten, the, the nine words in the other one. Like it adds up to a thousand and one letters. <laughs> so you get to a point and like, that occurs to you, and that's supposed to mean something. D okay, I'm not. I'm not even sure how to like. I don't even know how to ask you a question. And is the book so, supposed to be somehow like a parallel to a thousand and one nights? Is it like there's like some there's literary there's some corollary that, there that I'm supposed one, to get out of the story? So the of Scheherazade. There's the little bit that I know is. Uh, and this is like one version of like what the book could possibly be. So Ulysses mm -hmm. um, takes place in a single day. Right, that I Leopold do. Leopold Bloom wakes up yeah. in the morning and goes to Bloom, night. Bloomsbury. That's that whole thing, right? Uh, it's Bloomsday. Bloomsday. That's um, it. I can't remember the date. But it's, it's in sure. June, isn't it? I thought it was earlier. Okay, I don't know. doesn't matter. And even so if James Joyce wrote it, it we'd have to somehow. So this is supposed to be. Like, it's counterpart of the night. As in, a dream, this is like, one half is the waking world, this half is like the dream world. So oh, gosh. It's all kind of mixed up, and you're not really following, like, a linear... Because Ulysses was so coherent, now we need something that's... It's readable. Oh, yeah. Like, Ulysses, c comparatively, is a walk in the park. I haven't tried to read Ulysses in probably 20 years. Um, There's probably a reason for that. Now, some things that I, some thoughts that I had. Okay. The time that this thing was written, there was a lot of experimentation going on in a lot of different kind of art forms. Mm -hmm. So, like, I was thinking about like Jackson Pollock mm -hmm. and how that was such a big shift mm -hmm. in the art world, and it's like now non-represent. Like, you go from abstraction, mm -hmm. which is still connected to being rep you're, you're representing something to then going totally non-representational and it's all, all the splatters and there's like uh like new newman uh paul rothko and calder was in there too with his mobiles mobiles yeah, i mean so like, yeah that whole all sorts of uh, i was thinking about like jazz music that was getting like really experimental um even now you can have like experimental films and this kind of lumps in with those things the, the He's like Fellini before Fellini. Yeah. But it doesn't, to me, it doesn't fit the medium. So this is what You I, mean it's so far out? The, like the fact that you, like, you can look at a painting. Oh, yeah, you can look at, like, a Jackson Pollock and be like, that's art. Or I can kind of see, like, where his, like, why you would express yourself in this way. Right. There's some kind of as you said, like handhold or tether to reality. Mm -hmm. Like you can look at a Jackson Pollock painting and be like, I mean, I can see people going like, that's not art. But I can also see a lot of people saying, shit, why didn't I think of that? And like, yeah, that kind of makes, like I can see where like you, you, rep, you can represent a lot in that. So there, there's a big, like <clears throat> there's a strong voice saying that this is like the end of the road. So as far as like, pushing boundaries and like where modernism that definition of modernism at the time where it's going he took it to a dead end there's no <laughs> next stop that you can go no the to. next stop is Faulkner and it's a famous book because it's written by James Joyce okay can I ask you a question about James Joyce and and I'm I'm did James Joyce like did he have an alcohol problem I'm sure he did he was Irish <laughs> Don't leave hateful comments, friends. <laughs> no, I just like Dylan Thomas. Like, like I, I'm also, thinking about like like Dylan Thomas. I know had like a huge alcohol problem, and I'm just wondering if like this is part of some sort of like huge binge drinking, you know, opium yeah, it's, it's den. Not, it's not gobbledygook. So he he spent no, that is gobbledygook. He spent 14 years on this thing. Uh, it, it has like you know 30 some different. That's a hell of a bender. Like. He, he put a lot of effort into... Into this. making this nonsensical. Yeah. And, like, if you think about his, like, at the time where you have, like... 
these kind of pretentious, I don't really like to use this, pretentious people like Ezra Pound and T.S. Eliot. Oh, yeah. Where yeah. they're getting into this weird yeah. world. Like, this would be a book for his friends. So, like, Ezra Pound, let's say, I don't know this, but Ezra Pound could open it up. And he's sort of like having little inside jokes that if you're in the know, you'll get them. So it was really never meant to be like a mass market. I, I think he was insane. Like, well, I think he was, that's, he yeah. was disappointed uh, by the uh, reaction. Like, he started publishing uh, like snippets of the book, and uh, the little that I know, like, he wasn't getting the reaction that he wanted. People, everyone just thought it was gobbledygook. And he's like, well, no, like, there's all sorts of great things that you can figure out in this thing. But, okay, I just don't think people want to work that hard. I think that's why it's the end of the... Like, and, and, but like, there's a certain egotism in that, that I'm expected to, like, kind of... I, I think it, it, it holds, like, a very unique place, like... It's a book that I like to have. I'll keep it on my bookshelf. It's it's actually fun. If you're if you're not intending on reading it, it's fun to open it up. You can just open up to any page. It would be really fun to get like really two gin and tonics in. I, I feel like <laughs> start. You might have a better handhold <laughs> if you had an Irish inflection, maybe. Uh, but this is a thought that I had after reading the Sandman. This could. Po- like if, if somebody knows the book, let's say, someone's, you know, the guy that wrote The Skeleton People knows what's going on, uh, it might be like a fabulous adaptation for a graphic novel. Like, if you can insert visual elements to help you along, I think it could be like really interesting. Like those like, books that they did when we were kids, like, you know, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea for yeah, children. Yeah, like if, if there's things that textually you're not getting that possibly visually um it's it's in there well because there are only clearly that. so many footnotes you can put on a page like i think if if it was like a big art book with all of this stuff i bet like, you it would be beautiful i bet it would be beautiful yeah i bet you it would too yeah um i mean it would be also 500 pounds because that's a <laughs> thick book and you need a lot of annotations actually i have um, it would be like your coffee table's coffee table book look at this we're going to kind of end soon, but this is a graphic novel uh, of uh, Swan's Way. So the first volume of um, In Remembrance of Things Past. Oh, I have one of them, and I'm going to sound like, like the, oh, I have one of them, but it's for the collected stories of James Harriet. So it kind of, like, walks you through, like, if you're an American. So you can, like, like chop it up. Yeah, like what Yorkshire is and, like, you know, the medicine at the time. And it kind of, it gives you a lot of context. Uh, so, like, again, I didn't finish it. I'm not going to plan on finishing it. I'm not an expert on it. Um, but, I, I, I mean, I don't have much more to say. What do you think? I think that's good. Uh, you want to? Yeah. Okay, we're good. Uh, All right. Leave a comment if you'd like. Thank you. Tell us how much you love Joyce and what morons we are.